Now, what I want to do this week is talk about some ETFs and specifically the ETFs as they pertain to uh, the upcoming ETF report that we're going to be launching uh, on the 17th of August, it's going to be published. So we're going to be featuring eight ETFs in this report. ETF stands for Exchange Traded Fund. And this basically is a basket of stocks uh, that trades uh, like a security on, on the cash exchanges. So uh, the stocks or the ETFs that we're going to be featuring in this report include SPI, which is the uh, S&P 500 ETF. And this is on my uh, screen right now. You can see how we had a pretty bullish week. Uh, prices set to close near the highs of the week and the month. And that's a pretty uh, good sign. Uh, but can this rally continue as we uh, head towards that conjunction between Mars, Uranus, and the North Node in the sign of Taurus? Uh, well, that remains to be seen. Uh, but this is the main equity ETF that we're going to be uh, analyzing in this report. It's basically a gauge on the broader market, but we also are going to analyze uh, and observe the uh, gold miners ETF. So the ticker symbol on this one is GDX and precious metals had a very strong week. Uh, both gold and silver seemingly have formed important lows in the last couple of weeks and uh, they exploded higher with silver especially leading the way but uh, the easiest way uh, i think for investors and traders to have exposure to precious metals is through mining uh, shares of mining companies so uh, if you do not want to buy individual mining stocks to kind of reduce your risk for any individual company consider etfs or a basket of uh, mining stocks and gdx does a good job at that. Uh, it does tend to uh, purchase stocks that are uh, in more established mining companies. So that may uh, have some appeal for those that want exposure to precious metals, but a little bit more of a conservative uh, allocation to those types of stocks. So uh, here too, we observe that GDX is going out near the highs uh, of the week, not so much near the highs of the month, but a pretty good rally nonetheless. So we note that a low formed on uh, the 25th uh, of July, which was the same day that Venus formed a square aspect to, to Jupiter. And this is uh, especially interesting because normally metals don't like Jupiter uh, because Jupiter tends, you know, to, to bring good things and metals tend to do better uh, when, uh, you know, world events or monetary events are a bit more tumultuous. But uh, this week, as I mentioned earlier, we did get a negative GDP reading, uh, the second in a row, uh, which typically uh, spells recession. Uh, and we had the Fed raising rates. So this is something to keep an eye on as well. We also are going to be featuring a Bitcoin ETF, ticker symbol BITO, for those that don't want to buy uh, Bitcoin outright and store them on an exchange or any other way, just want to perhaps have it uh, in a traditional brokerage or investment account. This is a good way to get exposure uh, to Bitcoin. Uh, and here too, we saw that uh, prices came off a low that formed the day after Venus squared Jupiter. So a uh, big aspect uh, coming up with the Mars Uranus North Node conjunction in Taurus, uh, especially because so much of the boom that we've seen in uh, cryptocurrencies has been uh, the result of Uranus transiting through the sign of Taurus and the boom bust cycle that tends to unfold when we see that transit. Next comes TLT. This is a long-term uh, bond ETF, specifically of bonds with a maturity of 20 years or more. So uh, this is one of the most heavily traded bond ETFs. It gives uh, traders and investors good exposure to long-term bonds. Um, and this is kind of a bellwether um, when it comes to economic growth or recession, when you see markets turn down, uh, equity markets, that is, TLT tends to rally the most, uh, and long-term bonds tend to catch stronger bids when the economy is turning down. Conversely, when you're seeing economic growth or inflation, uh, and in a healthy inflationary environment, you tend to see uh, TLT and long-term bonds uh, lead the way lower, that, that is, long-term interest rates tend to rally the most in that regard. So uh, interesting uh, position here with the upcoming uh, aspect between Mars, Uranus, North Node, pressing up against technical resistance here. And when Uranus is involved, you have to be keen of a breakout, but is it going to be a legit breakout or a false breakout? Stay tuned and we'll definitely keep you updated on that front. Another ETF that we're gonna feature in this report is the United States Oil Fund, uh, USO. 
This uh, tracks some of the crude oil futures. So if you want exposure to the crude oil market, but don't trade futures contracts, uh, this is a good alternative to have in your uh, portfolio. So we'll be analyzing this uh, same type of, you know, cyclical and geocosmic analysis as we would otherwise uh, employ in our analysis of uh, crude oil futures. But now you have uh, an option and ability to uh, make actionable trades uh, with an ETF that follows that market uh, very closely. So uh, here too, we saw some notable price action uh, right around, we had a low form uh, last Friday, the first trading day before the Venus square aspect to Jupiter. And Jupiter is one of the co-rulers of the crude oil market together with uh, the planet Neptune. Next comes the healthcare ETF. Uh, healthcare is another key uh, market. One of the biggest components in the S&P, uh, we had a nice rally uh, into Thursday. We're reversing back a little bit lower on uh, Friday here, but overall seeing some strong trends uh, unfold in healthcare and uh, no shortage of demand in this sector given the demographic shift uh, in much of the Western world, but also a unique sector because so much innovation uh, is happening in the healthcare space as well. And I think with Jupiter going back into the sign of Pisces, now that it's retrograde, we could see some uh, interesting uh, price moves in the next several weeks or months in the healthcare sector. And also with Neptune being in the sign of Pisces until 2025, 2026, definitely a sector to keep an eye on. Uh, second to last one is the technology ETF. Tech is so important because it's been a secular leader uh, in the bull market since 2008, 2009, meaning that uh, it's been the sector where traders and investors could obtain returns above and beyond uh, the S&P index. So when tech uh, whatever tech does, the rest of the market tends to follow. And we've seen that unfold this year. As we saw tech peak in December, the rest of the market peaked the following month. And NASDAQ actually peaked the month before. But tech is important with Saturn in the sign of Aquarius. We saw what was a uh, chip shortage uh, now turning into a shipping uh, or a, a supply glut. So it went from a shortage to a uh, an abundance of supply. And now we see whether this will turn into a headwind for the sector, but ending the week and the month on a pretty strong note here, but with the aspect with Uranus involved, Uranus rules tech, uh, we are uh, lined up for a series of fireworks uh, in the next week or two. And last but certainly not least, by popular demand, we have a home builder ETF. We get a lot of questions on real estate. And so I think uh, this is a great ETF to see what's happening uh, in the home building sector as home building tends to be a leading indicator for real estate. And so with interest rates coming up in the last several months to year uh, or so, we've seen headwinds mount for the real estate sector, but uh, not, not a bad rally since mid June. Uh, and this rally uh, happened uh, not long after the sun squared uh, Neptune and formed a trine uh, to Saturn. And then we also had uh, it was actually about a week before uh, a conjunction between Venus and Uranus. So, uh, you know, if you like this type of geocosmic analysis in conjunction with uh, technical analysis and cyclical analysis, would definitely recommend you check out and stay tuned uh, for our ETF report, which is set to drop uh, on the 17th of August.